Hello guys, welcome back to another video. So today in this video, we will be starting with module 3 of antenna and wave propagation. So in the previous modules, we saw what a single antenna can do. We saw that an antenna acts as a transmitter and a receiver and that it has got certain properties and what all things a single antenna can do. So in this module, we will be talking about an array of antennas. So what do you mean by an array of antennas? Well, let's find out. So, in the previous module, we saw what a single antenna did. So, imagine that we take multiple amount of such identical antennas and place it together. Then, we obtain what you mean by an array of antennas. So, here, let this be a particular single antenna. So, an array of such antennas can be formed if a multiple number of elements, that is, a multiple number of antennas are placed together. So, here, as you guys can see, there are multiple number of elements or multiple number of antennas that are placed together. And he therefore, here, this is what you call an array of antennas. It is formed by multiple elements of antennas where each element is a particular antenna. So, in most cases, in a particular array of antennas, each antenna is identical. That is, each antenna has got the same properties and each of these antennas are identical. So, in most cases, the elements of an antenna are identical. So, now you might be wondering, why do we need this? Why, why can't we just simply use a single antenna? Why do we need to use multiple number of antennas? Well, let me answer that question. So, we use multiple number of antennas in order to increase the gain of that collective system. That is, instead of using a single antenna, when we use multiple number of antennas, it will collectively increase the gain of the entire radiation that is being transmitted. So, that is why we mainly use an array of antennas. So, by increasing the gain, obviously, it would also increase the directivity of that entire system. So, this is why we use an array of antennas. So, by also using an array of antennas, we can obtain a narrow beam. So, therefore, for all these purposes, that is for increasing the gain, for increasing the directivity and for obtaining a narrow beam, we use an array of antennas. So, it is used to increase the gain, the directivity and to have a narrow beam. So now, let us consider a coordinate system consisting of the x-axis, the y-axis and the z-axis as follows. So in this coordinate system consisting of the x-axis, y-axis and the z-axis, if each of the elements of that particular antenna array is arranged along each of these axes, that is if it is arranged along the x-axis or if it is arranged along the y-axis or it is aligned along the z-axis, then that kind of an antenna array is called a single dimensional antenna array or a linear antenna array. So, in this system, let us assume that the elements of the antenna is placed along the x axis. So, therefore, here, if the elements are placed along the x axis like this, then this kind of a system or this kind of an antenna array is referred to as a single dimensional antenna array or a linear antenna array. Now, if the elements of the antenna are placed across a particular plane, that is the xy plane or the yz plane or the zx plane, then that kind of an antenna array is said to be a two-dimensional antenna array or a planar antenna array. So, therefore, let us consider this coordinate system. So, now let us assume that an array of antennas is placed across the yx plane. So, here we can see that a multiple number of elements, that is a multiple number of antennas are placed across the yx plane. So, therefore, here this entire system is referred to as a two-dimensional array or a planar antenna array. So, this is a two-dimensional array or a planar array. So, now let us consider this array of antennas. So, here it has got a particular attenuator, then it has got a phase shifter 
and finally at the tip we have the particular antenna so let us consider this entire array of antennas so let this be antenna 1 and let this be antenna 2 and therefore let this be antenna n of the n number of antennas present in this particular array. So now when we observe this particular array of antennas we see that this array of antennas has got a particular radiation in a particular direction like this. So therefore all these antenna elements will have a radiation in a particular direction. So therefore each of this antennas that is each of the antennas antenna 1, antenna 2 up to antenna n will have a particular electric field in that direction that is here it will have E1, here it will have E2 and therefore here it will have En. So therefore each of these antennas will have a particular electric field in a particular direction of the radiation of the array of antennas. So therefore the electric field of each of this particular antenna is given by the equation E is equal to magnitude of E into exponential value that is E raised to J of psi where psi is the value of the phase of each of the antenna elements. So therefore, by observing this equation, the value of E1 can be obtained as magnitude of E1 into E raised to J psi 1, where psi 1 is the phase of the first antenna. So similarly, the value of the electric field of E2 can be obtained as E2 is equal to magnitude of E2 into E raised to J psi 2. Similarly, therefore, the value of En is given as magnitude of En into E raised to J psi n. So this thus is how we can find the value of the electric field of each of the antenna elements present inside an array of antennas. So now looking into this we saw that we had provided a phase shifter here. So this phase shifter was provided in order to provide a particular phase difference to the particular antenna array that is to each of these elements of the particular antenna array. So here let us assume that this particular phase shifter provided a phase difference of alpha 1 this one provided a phase difference of alpha 2 and similarly this provided a phase difference of alpha n then therefore the current value that flows after this is given as i1 and here it is i2 and similarly the current value here is i n so how do we find the value of i that is the current flowing through each of these elements of an array the value of current is obtained as i is equal to the magnitude of current i into e raised to j alpha. So that is for the first element 1, i1 is equal to i1 magnitude of i1 into e raised to j alpha 1. That is i then i2 is equal to i2 into e raised to j alpha 2. Similarly, i n is equal to magnitude of i n into e raised to j alpha n. This is how we find the value of the current that is flowing through each of these elements of the particular array of antennas. So now, we just found out the current value and the electric field of the individual elements of the particular antenna array. But the antenna array works collectively. So therefore, we need to find the total electric field that is produced by this array of antennas. So therefore, in order to find the total electric field, we take the sum of E1, E2, E3, E4, etc, etc up to En. Therefore, the total electric field is given by E is equal to E1 plus E2 plus etc, etc up to En. But, 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 but we just saw that E1 is equal to magnitude of E1 to E raised to J psi 1. E2 is equal to magnitude of E2 into E raised to J psi 2. And similarly, En is equal to magnitude of En into E raised to J psi n. So therefore, substituting each of these values in this equation, we get the total electric field as e is equal to e1 into e raised to j psi 1 plus e2 into e raised to j psi 2 plus etc etc up to plus en into e raised to j psi n. That is how we find the overall that is the total electric field of this entire array of antennas. And the phase, this particular phase phi of each single element is given as phi is equal to beta d plus alpha where alpha is given as the particular phase difference that is provided by the phase shifter and beta is given as beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda that is psi is equal to 2 pi by lambda into d plus alpha 
where beta is equal to 2 pi by lambda d is the spacing that is provided between each of these elements of this particular antenna and lambda is nothing but the wavelength this thus gives you an overall idea about an array of antenna elements so here we just saw the experimental setup which consisted of an attenuator a phase shifter and a particular antenna at the end and therefore the value of electric field of each of these elements was given as e1 is equal to e1 e raised to j psi 1 e2 is equal to e2 in the e raised to magnitude of e2 in the e raised to j psi 2 en is equal to magnitude of en in the e raised to j psi n so therefore these were the single or the individual electric fields that was produced by each of these elements of this particular antenna and therefore the particular current value of each of this because of this particular phase shifter was given as ie1 is equal to i1 into e raised to j alpha 1 and i2 is equal to i2 into e raised to j alpha 2 our in is equal to in into e raised to j alpha n where alpha is the phase difference that was provided by this particular phase shifter. So therefore, the total electric field was given as the individual sum of each of these elements that is E1 plus E2 plus E3 plus E4 etc. up till En. So which was given as E1 into E raised to J psi 1 plus E2 into E raised to J psi 2 plus etc. etc. up to En into E raised to J psi n where psi is given as the phase of a single element that is the phase that was present in a single element that is what psi means so the value of psi is given as beta d plus alpha where beta is nothing but 2 pi by lambda which is a constant okay if the wavelength is known so beta is given by 2 pi by lambda alpha is the phase difference that is provided by this particular phase shifter d is the spacing provided between these antennas that is the spacing provided between the elements of the particular array of antennas and lambda is nothing but the wavelength so this just gives you a clear idea of what an array of antenna is so in the subsequent topics of this module we will see more into the various things that a particular array of antennas can do and much more deeper into the topics so if you guys like this video, please do drop a like and subscribe to my channel. We will be seeing more interesting videos about this particular topic soon. So stay tuned for more such videos and peace out. I will see you in the next video. Bye.